Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design and I'm excited to share another little Simply G45 set of cards with you. I did one of these a couple of months ago and the response was so phenomenal that I told you I would try to do them more often. So this month is September but I'm working with the October papers for Halloween to help you guys all get your Halloween on. And I've used for these four cards two sheets from um, my very all-time number one top favorite of all, A Place in Time, the Deluxe Collector's Edition. I used both of the October papers. And I will just pull those out of this. As you can see, I have a backup collection because I love this collection so much. And these are the papers that I used. So what I did was I completely cut apart one page, all the images, tags, borders, stamps, and then on this page I cut up the little patterns and solids to use in my cards. And then to go along with that I used the orange houndstooth check and the black houndstooth check from Master Detective 12 by 12 patterns and solids. And with those papers I had enough to create these four adorable little cards. These measure five by five and they all have a little gift card treat pocket on the inside. Super duper cute. And I used up pretty much every last bit of the place and time papers, but I've layered up um, the various images and tags and patterns, little cut apart pieces. This is a Jolie's sticker, and I'm not really much of a sticker girl, but I saw these and they're kind of, they're like resin, so they're really cool. And I just loved these Halloween crows with their Halloween party hats and their little, um, some have pumpkins, some have banners. So I did add those, and I got these at Joanne. Um, I got them quite a while ago, hopefully they still have them. But that is what I used for the embellishments, die cut, doilies from black cardstock paper that's a cheery lynn french pastry dye this is bold black plaid ribbon black check ribbon from really reasonable ribbon and the petaloo flowers were in my stash so that's the first card here's the next one see look at this cool crow with his hat and the pumpkins the moth the skull very cool really really fun lots of dimension i added here and then this one, the gift card pocket is on the side, and then there's just this cute image over here. Here is this one. This one I did some fussy cutting on. I fussy cut the witch, and I cut down the postcard. And of course, you're gonna watch me make these completely in the video that follows, so that'll be easy. The little chipboard buttons up here. This has the pocket here, and then just decorate it here. And then this last one, this is my favorite image from these papers, this wonderful Saturday Evening Post cover. Here's another of the little spooky crows, flowers, ribbon, and then just dress this up with a little tag, cut up some border pieces, and then the pocket is over here on the side. So that's the cards. Don't go away. I'll be right back. We're going to make each of these four cards step by step, starting with the inside. I will have, I'll give you all the measurements as we work together, and you'll work with me as we build these cards together. So hang on, and I'll be right back. Okay, let's get started with this little um, tutorial. The first thing you're going to need to do is take two pieces of 12 by 12 card stock and cut them to measure 5 inches by 12 inches. That's pretty easy. Then you're just going to place the long side on your scoring tool and you're going to score at 5 and at 10. And this is going to create our little pocket card base. So easy. So, so easy. So I like to start by building the inside of my cards. And this is Patterns and Solids. This is that orange Patterns and Solids from Master Detective. And I have cut this to measure four and seven eighths inches square. And I'm just gonna run a little bead of adhesive around there. Center this on the bottom part of my card. 
and then I'm going to take a tiny bit of adhesive on either side of that pocket flap and just glue that into place. Quick and easy. Then this is the Black Hound's Tooth from Master Detective, and this is four and seven eighths by one and three quarters. And I tend to work a lot with scraps, so sometimes, um, you know, I'm a sixteenth or a thirty second of an inch over the um, measurement that I'm giving to you, but it it all works out just fine. So that goes on our pocket flap. Then. This is just a little scrap. This is the patterned paper on the back side of Place and Time. And this is right at one and a half by four and seven eighths inches. This was just a little piece left over from designing one of the card fronts. And we're just gonna add this up here on the top as a pretty little border. And then this is another piece of the patterned paper from um, Place and Time. And again, it's a scrap, so I'll give you the measurement, but it doesn't have to be exact. Two and a quarter by four and just about three eighths. And I'm just gonna stagger this. I want that little border on the top, I think. Like this. That's very cute. And then this is one of the tags, and I just trimmed the corners out. So, add a little adhesive, and I like this right about here. And then just a couple of little postage stamps. I just crinkle those up a little bit. And of course, in your pocket, you can put a gift card, you can put an individually wrapped tea bag, you can put a little spending money. Here's a little um, four and seven eighths inch strip from the cut apart border. And I, don't, I could go either way with this. I think I'll go with the blue to pick up on the blue that's in our postage stamp. So that looks really cute. And then maybe I'll just tuck this little piece up here. And that looks fantastic. I'm very happy with that. So that's the inside of our card. Then close the cover. This is another four and seven eighths inch square of the Black Hound's Tooth Check from Master Detective. And of course you could use any black print that you wanted. But I just thought this looked really cute with this collection. Here's a little piece of the pattern, because you know you get two pieces of each um, design in your Deluxe Collector's Edition. So I cut one piece all up into images, and then I used the other pieces so I could have the cute patterned papers on the back. And then this is a die cut doily, but before we put that down, this is the October border strip, but it's too wide for my little card, so I just cut it. And I'm going to put it right in the center of a sort of a belly band. I'm just, this is a um, Cherry Lynn, this is the French pastry doily that I just die cut from black cardstock. And that's going to go right here. And then this is the postcard. And again, it was a little bit too big. So I've cut it down to measure just about three and an eighth by three and an eighth. And I just, you know, adhered it together, added some chipboard on the back. And let's do it like this. And then this cute little witch was one of the small images and I just kind of loosely fussy cut around her and backed her with adhesive. And we're gonna set her right here. And, oops, I left this piece out. I wanted this little purple piece in there. Let's lift this. I think we can get away with it. I don't think my liquid glue has set yet. 
I want this side. This is Happy Halloween. There we go. And um, I just want to talk with you about liquid adhesive. One of the big mistakes that people make with liquid adhesive is that they use too much. And then it kind of goes, squishes all out the sides, and then people think, oh, I hate liquid adhesive. But if you just, it doesn't take a lot of liquid adhesive to get the job done, especially if you use a good one. This is um, Art Institute Dries Clear. And as soon as this bottle is empty, I have a bottle of Wendy Vecchi um, Perfect Card Adhesive that I want to give a try. Whoops, I put her on the wrong side. It's very hard to craft and talk, so let's just move her. And again, this is why I like to work with liquid adhesive. She's going to go right over here like she's standing in the pumpkin patch. And then, this is a Jolie's dimensional sticker. I've had this in my stash forever. And I just want to line this up and press that down. That's really, really cute. And let me just use a wet wipe to get that little bit of adhesive off of there. And then these are Fiskar shaped scissors. This is the one that um, has the postage edge on it, and I'm just going to cut one of these little stamps out. Crinkle it up a little bit, and tuck it back in behind my main panel. Just like that. And then I do have a bow for this card, but I forgot to... Um, turn on my glue gun. So let me do that real quick. I apologize if things are a little dark. We are, this is the weekend of hurricane flow and we have not seen sun in days. It is still raining out there. But when my glue gun is hot, I will adhere this right here. And look what a darling little card with a gift pocket. And that took no time at all. Let's do another one. So here's the next one. And let me move the card cover off to the side, and we will build the interior first. I like to do that because then the cover of my card doesn't get all messed up. So once again, this is a 4 and 7 eighths inch square of the Black Hound's Tooth. And if you wanted to, you could cut this um, shorter on the bottom side because the pocket fits, but, you know... It's just easier for me to do it this way. So we're adding our adhesive on the sides. I'm just flipping that up. So for our pocket flap, again, I work with scraps. So not everything is uniform. But this way I get to use up most of a collection. And you still end up with a really cute card. So that one is 4 and 7 eighths. And the width on it is 1 and a half. Then this is just a little border piece. And I will tell you very quickly that I did ink all my edges with ground espresso distress ink. You could use the photogenic, Decades Photogenic. I just happen to have the um, ground espresso on my desk. So it was handy, so I grabbed it. But the Graphic 45 Decades Photogenic would be a great color match for this. And then let me just trim this up a bit. I left a little bit of an edge on this and I'm just going to actually trim around this. This will be a nice little spot to write a message. this cute 
little kitty cat tag that we're just gonna stick down like this and I think that's good for the inside now let's do the cover this is the uh, patterns and solids and I left that little tiny bit of a checkerboard um, at the top So this is going to go right here. This will work. We've got this little black bit of border that we can put at the bottom. And that leaves a little bit of a gap between these two, but I kind of like the way that looks. So this is a little piece of the patterned paper. I just angled the corners to turn it into a tag. And this is going to be one of our layering pieces in the back, like that. And then just a little scrap of purple. This is about two and an eighth by I don't know, three and five eighths, a little bit more than. And like I said, it doesn't really matter. These are just scraps. And this is kind of how I clean up a collection. That looks really good. Then our die cut doily. And I want this centered. That looks good to me. And then this is one of the little tags. And we're just going to put this down off center like this. This is one of the little images and I've just backed it with waste packing material. And it's going to sit right here. And then here's another one of those dimensional stickers. And he's going to go just like that. And trim out one of these stamps. You can get these scissors. I don't know if you can get them online. They used, Joanne used to sell them. Michaels used to sell them. They're pretty. They used to be really easy to find. I think they still are. I've had these forever. Let's tuck that down in there. And then this is one of the little stickers from the sticker sheet. I've just backed it on black cardstock. And I like it right here. And then we'll come back and we'll add the ribbon. Once my glue gun is hot. Let's move on to the third card. And this one is a side fold, just to change things up and keep things fun. Cut it exactly the same way, just when you, whoops, I forgot to ink these. Um, you just turn it on its side and have the pocket on the side instead of having the pocket um, on the bottom. And it doesn't really matter, it's just to change things up, because I get bored easily. I think that's one of the reasons I craft, is that I really like to be kept busy. Alright, so just as before, four and seven eighths inch square of this black hound's tooth print from Master Detective. And I think I used one sheet, not even a whole sheet of this, and um, just a partial sheet of the orange. And you can see here, I just did cut a little bit. I'll measure that for you in a second. Everything is gonna be four and seven eighths inch tall. So I think the width on this was three. Yep, three. I had my adhesive on the sides. And see, you can't tell that it's not a full sheet of paper. Then a four and seven eighth by, I'm going to say that's like one and three quarters. Hold on, I'll measure it for you. It might be as much as two to line our pocket. That's pretty good, guys. That's exactly one and three quarters. That's pretty good. And then a little border strip. 
that I just cut to four and seven eighths inches that um, actually I think I want to put this I'll put this right here super cute then I'm going to take this little piece I'm going to put it over here and I'm going to put my little Halloween girl and I left that open so you can tuck something in there if you want to I love these little vintage images they're so sweet I think if I could only have one paper collection ever for the rest of my life and I had to keep using it over and over again it probably would be place in time because you've got something for every month and season of the year so here is uh, a piece that I cut with the border attached with the checkerboard pattern below. This is from the back side of Place and Time. And of course it's four and seven eighths inches wide by almost four inches tall. And then here is the orange stripe. And again, I just do this, you know, use little bits and pieces, finish up all those little scraps. That's gonna go just like that. And then I want this little border strip also cut to four and seven eighths. Okay. That goes down there. And this is just another little border strip. I love the border strips. This is going to go right along the bottom. Then a doily. All right, and then again, a little tag that I angled the corners on, added a little corduroy brad to the top, super cute. Now, this goes over here, like this. Then trimmed out this little image, backed it with chipboard. This goes here, like that. And then here's the last of my Jolie's. I think that is so cute. I like that rather a lot. And this is also a side opening. So let's go in and do the inside first. And again, I forgot to ink. Four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. Hounds to check. Then I have a little half of a doily. Sometimes I die cut, and the die cut is not perfect on one side. Um, so I save those because they make great layering pieces. So that goes there. This is a little border piece. This right here. Here's the other part of that border piece. I just cut it to make it fit. It says trick or treat. Be so sweet. Please give me something good to eat. I'm just going to tuck that little tag right in there. Then over here on this side, I have another one of these smaller pieces, three inch by four and seven eighths of the orange hound's tooth from Max Master Detective. I'm working quickly here because I want to try to get done. We've been losing power on and off ever since the storm came through. So I'm wanting to make sure that I don't lose power. I want this purple on my pocket flap. And again, it doesn't completely cover, but that's fine. It's just about adding that little punch of color. And then to dress this pocket up, I've got this cutie pie little guy. I think I'm gonna put him up high. Just enough adhesive to hold him in place. 
he goes right there and then this is just a little scrap of border I wanted to show you how you could use these just to add little finishing pieces to your cards now let's do the front this is a piece of the black checkerboard with the border piece left on this is four inches by four and seven eighths inches and this time I want that border piece on the side just like this then I have this purple print piece I wish graphic 45 would make a whole pad of just the prints the little prints from place and time do them in 12 by 12 because I love these prints and I'm always torn between using the images and using the prints all right so this is the main image from the October page. I love this. And I put chipboard on the back to elevate it. I'm going to put this down right about here. And then very quickly tuck this doily back behind. And this raven fits perfectly right here with this little spooky tag. And I'm going to use my glue gun. This is one of the little chipboard tags that comes with the DCE. This is going to go right here. Just hold that in place while the glue sets. I just ran a little snippet of ribbon through that. And tuck this little kitty cat in the pumpkin kind of back behind that panel just like that to tie in all the purple and black and I don't think we need to do anything else so this is what I had left that's pretty good I'm pretty pleased with that so a few of these um, retired petaloo burlap sunflowers that are done up in um, Halloween colors so I think we'll add those and Here's a bow, and I think I'll put this bow, because i got to have a bow. I'm going to put this bow right here. Cute, cute. Top it with a flower. There we go. How adorable is that? Super easy, too, right? And this one, I already put the bow down. We'll just add the flower right here. I call this fussing the bow. Before the glue sets, you can move the tails and the loops to kind of make them do what you want them to do. Look how cute that is. Really super adorable. And then this one. And I think... I think I want the ribbon right here. Ooh, that glue is hot. You work with hot glue long enough and you kind of get used to burning your fingertips. Look how adorable. This darling. And then card number four. Last but not least. I think I want the ribbon right on the side. There you have it. Now you can see how you can use two sheets of Graphic 45 Place in Time October plus two sheets of Graphic 45 Master Detective Patterns and Solids to make four fantastic Halloween gift card holders. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope I've shared some tips and tricks and techniques and ideas that you can use in your own crafty adventures. If so, I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you along for the journey. Wishing you a very happy Halloween. I'm going to go get my craft on. Bye. This path will lead you to an unholy place, a cemetery. Mm -hmm.